Okay, Assalamualaikum and welcome to Dynamics Week 3. Okay. Well, now we're in Week 3 and we're going to start uh, uh, with the next uh, uh, method, which is on <coughs> motion of projectile. Okay. Right now, I am trying to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, I do. Okay, all right. Now, so let's have a look. So, topic chapter one is on kinematics of particles. Okay. As we mentioned previously, when we do topics on kinematics of particles, it is only concerned with the geometric aspect. And the geometric aspect is the position, the velocity, the acceleration, and the time. Okay. It does not relate with forces. Okay, so for topic kinematics of particle, actually we can divide it into two types. One is motion when it moves in a straight line. So when it moves in a straight line, we call it rectilinear motion. And when it moves in a curved line, we call it curvilinear motion. Okay, so for rectilinear motion, we have taught, I have taught you two types of methods. Method number one is the using the basic kinematic equation. Okay, basic kinematics equation. And that is velocity equals to ds over dt. Acceleration equals to dv over dt. And lastly, ads equals to vdv. Right? Okay. That is what we learned previously. And then for rectilinear motion, we also have another method which is called constant acceleration. Okay. Let me just uh, recap what we learned and what are we going to learn, okay? Then we will go into detail. So for constant acceleration, we have three formulas, which is V equals to, can you do this with me? Danish, V equals to, oh, I can hear you flipping your books. You have not memorized it yet, Danish. You should be memorizing it now, okay? V equals to V naught plus ACT, then S equals to S not plus yes. V not T. Yes. Plus 1 over 2 ACT squared. Yes. And one last one. Uh, v squared. Mm. Uh, v not squared plus mm. 2 AC. Mm. And S minus S not. Okay, so those are the two methods that we learned previously. And we also did also motion relative with another uh, particle, motion of several particles. Okay, motion of several particles. Okay, that doesn't have space here. Okay, I'm going to write it up here. So we also learned on motion of several particles. Do you remember the formula, Danish? Uh, where we relate the relative motion, you know, the relative motion x a of b equals to x b minus x, b minus x, x a. Okay, and then if you differentiate it, it becomes velocity. You differentiate velocity, it becomes acceleration. This is what you call the relative. Okay, relative motion with respect to another one. Okay, so these are the three things that we learn when we study basic uh, rectilinear motion. Okay, so I'm sure you already clear about these three methods because we also have done formulas related to, uh, we have done a number of questions related to it. Okay, is there someone who wants to join? Okay. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, all right, now, for curvilinear motion, where's my mouse? Where's it gone? Okay, for curvilinear motion, for, so I mean for today's class, we're going to learn another three methods. Okay, I'm a different color. 
Okay, we're going to learn another three methods. Okay, all right. I hope you can fit here. Okay, so for today's class, we're actually we're going to learn how to use the rectangular coordinate system. Okay, rectangular coordinate system. Okay. And there is another method that we will learn, but not today. Okay, maybe this Thursday or after Raya. Okay, which is called the normal and tangential method. Okay. And then lastly, that we will, another method that we will also learn is called radial and transverse. So these are the three important methods that actually you will be learning in the topic of curvilinear motion. Okay, so you might be asking, what's the difference between these three methods? Okay, very simple. Rectangular coordinate system, the key word is free flight motion. Okay, free flight motion is very simple. It's something that we throw up in the air and then it falls down to the ground. What can what kind of activity sports that is thrown up in the air and falls down? For example, let's say you play golf, so the ball goes up and fall down. You play badminton, you play basketball, you're playing basketball and you're shooting the ball into the hoop. Uh, so anything that is uh, flying, like a free flight, is called rectangular coordinate system. So basically, you will get a number of questions is related to a motion that moves in the curve but in order for you to decide okay my motion is moving in a curve line but which method should i use if your motion is flying and dropping down automatically you know is the rectangular coordinate system you have to use okay and the example i have mentioned just now another example is let's say you are skiing and then you're going up the ramp so you are flying up the ramp and you're Landing, uh, that is so called, uh, is another example that is a free flight motion where you fall down due to gravity. And uh, for that method, you use the rectangular coordinate system. Okay, and then you have normal and tangential. Normal, you use the symbol N, tangential, you use symbol T. Okay, this one is for the method where you can say the path is known. What it means is, for example, you are at your College of Engineering and then you want to go to Section 2. Of course, you will pass by the roundabout, right? So you're inside your car or motorbike. When you pass around the roundabout, the path is known. You know the path. So this is an example of a normal and tangential method. Or, for example, you have a, a, a string, a, a string. In Ali, uh, like a swing. How does the swing move? It moves in a curved line. That is correct. And the path is known. You know it's going to sway up and then it's going to come back for, back down. So you know the path. So this is an example for normal and tangential method. And then lastly, we have another method is what you call radial. We use the symbol R. And transverse, we use the symbol theta. This is when the path is restrained. The path is restrained. Okay, a good example when I say the path is restrained, it means that it is moving in a curve line, but it's restrained to one point. Something is restraining it. A good example is like a torch light uh, 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 or a spotlight. A good example is a spotlight. Example, let's say you there's a place, a building, and it has a spotlight near the gate, but the path of the light, it can only move from 0 to 90 degrees, right? So it's restrained. But it is moving in a curved line, but it is restrained. Like for just now, the car is this not restrained to anywhere. It is, the path is known, but it can move to anywhere it goes. But for radial and transverse, the path is restrained. Okay, so those are the three different types of motion that we can that can happen when the path is moving in a curve line. 
Okay. So what you need to do is when you get an exam question, you look at it. Okay. Now I have this question. I, I know that this is not moving in a straight line. It is moving in a curved line. But which method do I want to use? Because each of these three different methods have a, a different uh, solution in how to solve it. So you need to understand all three methods. Because again, this is topic chapter one. You are not sure which question will come out in the exam. Because in the exam question uh, for the test, you will have three, you, uh, for the test, there will be three topics. So it means topic chapter one, two, three will come out. So there's confirmed there will be topic chapter one. In the exam, also, there will be topic chapter one because in the final exam, it will cover topic one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, we will repeat topic chapter one. And again, you're not sure which topic. As you can see, topic chapter one is plenty. So maybe in the test, rectangular coordinate system, and then in the final, maybe radian transverse, we don't know. Or maybe the same question will come up, same method. We don't know. But either, either that, you must know all methods because forever for you to able to answer all questions in the exam. Okay, now, now we will start uh, understanding the con theory for rectangular coordinate system. Okay, Danish, I will need you soon when we start doing the question. Uh, question eh? now is uh, still uh, uh, explaining about the concept. All right, class, are you okay? Boleh, Danish? Okay, then. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to do the rectangular coordinate system. Okay. Rectangular coordinate system. Okay. So for the rectangular coordinate system, actually, there is another term that the books use, which is we call it motion of projectile. Because you want to understand the projectile of the particle that is moving from one point to another point. So for this one, uh, the key thing that I mentioned just now, an example is for easy for you to get understand is a free flight motion. Okay? Okay. So to understand this method, rectangular coordinate system, you will have to draw the X and Y axis. Okay? So let's say draw the X and Y axis. And then you must also have a particle. A particle that is, uh, let's say you have this particle. This is the initial position. And then it flies into the air and it stops here, for example. So here you have two positions. Okay, this first position, we call it initial. And this last position, we call it final position. Okay, so let's say the initial position. Usually initial, we use a single one. X not. So this will be X not, and this will be what do you think? Y not. So let's say I ask you, what will be the coordinate for the first initial position? It's not the one I'm calling it. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So this will be X not, Y not. So again, for this type of question, you need to identify the coordinates. If you get the coordinates wrong, everything will be wrong. Okay. So for the final position of this uh, particle, let's say it lands here, what do you think the final position will be? If initial is X, the final should be what? X. X, yes. So the final position is X, Y, and X. Okay, so this coordinate will be X and Y. Okay, the next thing, because this is topic kinematics, where, as I mentioned, it deals with the geometric aspect, which is position, velocity, acceleration, and time. It means position is done. You have the position. Next is velocity. So for velocity, for the first red dot, this is the velocity, which we call what? V or V naught? V naught. V naught. And the final velocity, we call it? 
V. Okay. Now, since we need to resolve this using the rectangular coordinate system, it means you need to resolve V0. It cannot be in a moment of slanting. It must be in Paxi X and Paxi Y. So for X and Y coordinate, you need to resolve it in X direction. So this one will be called V0X. And when you need to resolve in the vertical direction, this one will be called V0Y. And then you will need to know what is this angle. Okay? So in the end, what you can do is, you can write what is V0X. So V0X is actually equals to V0 cos theta. So what do you think for V0Y is? V0 sine theta. Yes, V0 sine theta. That is correct. Okay, similar to the final. This one will be V, this one will be Vx, this one will be Vy. Okay, the next is acceleration. Okay, since it's a free flight motion and it drops due to gravity, so the acceleration we will have in terms of in the vertical direction. So what do you think the acceleration when something drops down? Negative 9.81 9 yes, units meter per second square. So we only have the acceleration in the vertical direction. Acceleration in the horizontal direction will be equal to 0. There's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. And finally, time. Time will be the time taken from the initial to the final. Okay, now, if you understand this, we can now proceed to do our first uh, question. Okay, uh, this part, I will need more of your help. It's beside Danish, anyone can also answer. So, first of all, copy this question. Have you finished copying the slide? This slide? Da. Have you finished copying it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. Right. If Danish have finished, everyone should finish already then. Okay. All right, the first question. Can you copy this? Okay. I'll write it down. Copy it first. So hari ni you all tak sempat lah nak pergi bazar Ramadan sebab ada kelas dengan saya. Yes. Sempat. <laughs> Mana lagi best? Pergi bazar Ramadan kelas dengan saya. Berhati-hati bila menjawab. Kelas dengan doktor. Hmm, okay good. Kelas dengan madam di bazar. Ada juga 
Ada juga nak pergi bazar kan Okay, sikit je. Kita akan buat uh, dua soalan hari ni eh. Uh, berkemungkinan kita akan habis cepat. Okay sebab kita start on time. Alright. Berkemungkinan you all sempat nak pergi bazar. Okay, dah salin bagi tahu eh. Itu air kalah-kalah sikit lah. Dah? Masih? Belum. Belum. I hope you're not colouring. I can colour while waiting for you. Nah, Okay now Dah salin eh But before that I miss one step In explaining Oops I miss one step In explaining something Okay now Since we are going to do The rectangular coordinate system And since we have uh, Acceleration Which is constant acceleration Where it drops down Due to gravity we need to use the constant acceleration formula. So we need to write down that formula first. So we write back down that formula. Okay. Every time you need to write it many, many times because we're going to use it many, many times. Don't flip your book. By now, you should remember. You should already remember it. Okay. No flipping books to look at the formula. Now, since for this kind of question, we need to uh, use horizontal and vertical motion. Why? Because we're using the rectangular coordinate system. Everything has to be horizontal and vertical. So you need to create another equation, but using the above equation. So let's say we have the horizontal motion. And then secondly, we have the vertical motion. Okay, horizontal motion and vertical motion. For the horizontal motion, uh, as I mentioned just now, what is the acceleration? Do you have any acceleration in horizontal? No. Danish? No. So the no, acceleration will be equals to zero. But in the vertical motion, do you have the acceleration? Yes. Which is equal to negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, good. So now what we need to do is we need to reuse back the above formula to write the new formula. So what it would be? V equals to V naught plus ACT. But because AC, A acceleration is zero, 
it means you are left with V equals to V0. Okay? Same goes as the second formula. S equals to S0 plus V0 T. E. So because, because acceleration is zero also, this becomes zero. So you're only left with S equals to S0 plus V0 T. E. Same with the final formula. V squared equals to V0 squared plus 2AC S minus S0. Because again, acceleration is zero, you're left with V squared equals to V0 squared. But for V squared equals to V0 squared, this one you will cut it, end up, you will get V equals to V0. So for the horizontal motion, as you can see, horizontal motion, you only have two formulas here. Okay? Which is V equals to V0. And then the other one is S equals to S0 plus V0 T. Okay, this one is the same as this one. Okay, so I think you get what I mean. So for vertical motion, we will do the same. Okay, it will be V equals to V0. Since the acceleration is negative, we can automatically put a negative GT. All right, for the next one, S equals to S0 plus V0 T minus 1 over 2 GT. And the last one, Danish, can you do for me? Uh, v squared uh -huh. equals to V not squared. Yes. Minus 2G S minus S not. Yes, that is correct. So here you have another, for vertical motion, you have another three formulas that you need to remember. Okay, so for vertical motion. Okay. All right, saja buat kala-kala. Okay, you can put the formula in the box. Is my mouse? Oops. Not what? Okay. I can't find my pen. Where is this? Oh, here it is. Okay. Ah, I couldn't find my pen. It's, it's not detecting. Okay. Yeah. So I will write this formula. Uh, in a uh, label it this as one, this as two, so that when we decide to ah, when we decide when we decide which formula to use, you will tell me which one. Let's say this is three, this is formula number four, and this is formula number five. Okay, so we have five formulas here. Okay. Get it? Okay. Now we're going to... Now we're going to do this question. Okay, now. So, now, how to do this question? Okay. The chipping machine is designed to eject wood chips at initial velocity of V0 equals to 7.5 7 meter per second. So, the initial velocity here is 7.5 Five. This is V not eh? Okay. Let me rub that. So V not is seven point five meters per second. If the cube is oriented at thirty degrees from the horizontal, determine how high H the chips strike the pile. If at this instance they land on the pile six meter from the cube. So this is a chipping machine where there are woods and leaves. So after they, uh, the chipping machine chips into small pieces, the chips will fly up in the air and drop at point A. So first of all, to get marks, you need to draw this diagram in your question paper. And of course, you need to resolve this part. As I mentioned, because this is using the rectangular coordinate system, 
So for horizontal will be V naught bracket X. And this will be equals to what? 7.5, what? Cos or sine? Cos. Cos, what angle? 30. 30. Okay, so for the V naught Y will be sine, of course. Sine, so 30. Okay, so you can get that value already. Can you calculate that value for me? For V naught X, what is it? 6.5. Yes, 6.5 meters per second that way. Okay, how about for the V naught Y? Three point seven five meter per second. Yes, that's correct. Up. Okay. Do by doing this and drawing this, you are able to get between two to three marks. Okay. All right. The next thing that we need to do is we need to know the coordinate. Okay. What is the coordinate here? Okay. Let me highlight here. Here is this black dot I'm drawing. Our initial position. What is the coordinate there? Uh, zero, zero. Yes, that's correct. So the coordinate there is actually zero, zero. And this represents, if we need to write the coordinate in terms of variables, it will be x naught, y naught. So the final coordinate here at point A, what is it? What is the coordinate here? x, y. That's correct, x, y. But what is the value? Can you tell me? What is X? Uh, six. Six meters, that's correct. What is Y? One point two minus H. Are you sure? It is correct, but ne negative. Yes, um, negative. Right? Anything anything of course is negative, right? Why? Because let's say I imagine, let's say this is 2, this is 2, and then I'm asking you this dot here. This is this is 3. What is the coordinate for that? It will be 3 minus 2, right? Yes. So anything below will be a minus, okay? All right. So in this point here, our y is actually... Where's my pen? Our y is actually oh, okay. our y our y is actually one point two minus h because we want this height. Understand? This is our y, but because it's at below the x x axis, it will be negative one point two plus h. So in the end we can say is h minus 1.2 because it looks nicer that way. Instead of negative 1.2 plus h, we put h minus 1.2. Who doesn't understand? Understand, eh? Yes. Understand? Okay, good. So we have got the coordinates. Okay, even sometimes the coordinate will also give you marks. Okay, because if coordinate is wrong and then you resolve this is wrong, then you will, it won't be easy for you to solve the problem and it's going to be wrong anyway. Okay, now, so for this question, what, what is the question? They ask you to find H. So when they ask you to find H, it means they ask you to find Y. Because in H here, it's actually a what? Y. So which formula do you want to use? Okay, have a look. Why? Why is in the vertical direction. So it means you need to use the vertical motions formula to find Y. So which formula you want to use? Because Y is available where? In the vertical motion. Either formula 3, 4 or 5. So which one you want to use to solve this problem? Uh, three, uh, five. Five. Okay. You decide to use five. Okay. Let's try formula five then. Okay. 
So formula 5 is actually V squared equals to V naught squared plus 2 AC S minus S naught. Right now, our initial is uh, our, our initial is V naught. Our final is V. That is clear. This is our final. And this is our initial, right? Okay. But then again, have a look at this question. Here, the question is actually given uh, point A. Can you see point A? Oops. Point A. It means when you want to label the X and Y, you don't label it as X and Y. What should be the correct one is, all right, is actually, can you guess? It should be X, A, Y, A. So this is Y, A that you want to solve, okay? So can you please correct this? It's not something that needs to be corrected, but it's able to you to prevent from you to make careless mistakes, okay? All right, so go back here. So we know that our initial is X naught and Y naught. Our final is XA and YA. So when you want to replace V, and this one is using the vertical motion, so write it down, vertical motion, so you don't make a mistake. So this should be VY squared. And this should be V not Y squared. This is the mistake student always make. After they use the, base, the constant acceleration formula, they usually forget to replace V as Y because we're using the vertical formula. This is the only way for us not mistake with the horizontal formula. Okay, so plus 2, not plus, it should be what? Minus 2G. It should be minus 2G. And our initial S is what actually? S, sorry, S is final. S naught is what? Initial. But we're looking at the vertical. So when we're looking at the vertical, you need to only look at the vertical. So what is our S? Um, H minus 1.2. Okay. No, no. Look here. The yellow color. What should oh, it be? Y -A. Y -A. Yes, that's what I want you to say. And S naught should be Y naught. Once you get this correct, then only you will not make any careless mistakes. Okay? All right. Okay. So, again, this will be, do, do you have VY? You don't have VY yet. Do you have V not Y? Class, what is V not Y? Uh, 7.5? 3.75 meter per second. Yes. But I will write this down so you don't make mistakes. Okay, so the other thing students always make mistake is they do not know that V not Y is actually V not sine theta. Okay, okay, we're doing it one by one so that you don't make mistake. Okay, I I'm doing it one by one, very detailed, so you don't make mistake. I know you can actually proceed to re just replace it, but then again, you will not uh, a, a mistake can happen. So I'm going one by one so that you don't make mistakes okay just to show you but later on when you do the exercise many many times you should not have any problem so what is ya h minus 1.2 what is y not zero zero okay again this one student always make mistake they forgot to put the square okay again here I think there are many unknowns here. So Vy squared, this one is, uh, what is it? Uh, 3.75 squared minus 2 times 9.81 h minus 1.2 minus 0. Okay, here you have how many number of unknowns? Two. Two. So it means you still are unable to solve it because there are two unknowns. It means you need to find Vy. Or you can try another formula to solve it. Any suggestions?
have a look back at the formula. Do you want to, um, is it, can you find VY or do you want to try another formula in the vertical motion? Any suggestions? Just now, what formula we tried? We tried formula five. In, do you have any other suggestions? Anyone? You can you can give suggestions if you're not sure. Just suggest me a formula. For the first time, it's always try and error, but after that, you will understand it and you will quickly decide what formula to use. Can I have a suggestion, please? Come on, Ganesh, give me a, 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 a formula. Which formula? Uh, number three. Number three, okay. It's okay. I will follow your idea and suggestion. And we will see whether it's suitable. Okay, so formula number three, what is it? V uh, V equals to V naught minus GT, right? So this will be VY. This will be V naught Y minus 9.81T. So V naught Y, V naught Y you already calculated just now, which is 3.75 minus 9.81T. Again, how many unknowns can you see here? Two. Two. And again, this formula is not suitable. You know why? Because it doesn't have YA here. There's no YA in this formula. So you're not going to solve the problem. Understand? Okay. Oh, yeah. So what are the formulas you have here that we can try? Anyone? Number first. Can first? we try the horizontal motion? Which one? First. Number one. Horizontal. Okay, this one was for vertical. Are you sure? No. Okay, it's okay. For the horizontal, we know that V equals to V naught. And for horizontal, it means this is Vx equals to V naught x so you know what is vx v not x v not x is actually 6.5 does so does it solve the problem what do we want okay. next what else that we have not tried any suggestions we have two formula we have not tried. Are we going to try all until we find the solution? Which formula you want to try? We've tried five, we've tried three, we've tried one, we are left with two and four. Which one? Four and four. Okay, four pula. Dua. So four, you must do pula. Okay. Okay, we'll try four first. Four is S equals to S naught plus V naught T minus 1 over 2 G T squared. So S here actually represent the final. So this is be Y A. S naught is Y naught. And this one, since is vertical, it will be V naught Y T minus 1 over 2 G T squared. So Y A, do we have Y A? Y A is H minus 1.2. Y naught is 0. V naught Y is what? 3.75t minus 1 over 2 gt squared. Again, we are left with how many unknowns? Dua. Dua. But mm. even though we are left with two unknowns, we have ya here, which we want to find h. h is the unknown that we want to find. So what it means is maybe what you need to do is to find t. So you need to find T first. So we are left with one more formula, which we can use, which is X. No, the formula is what? 
for horizontal, remember we are left with one more formula, the horizontal, which is S equals to S naught plus V naught T. Acceleration is zero, eh? Remember, acceleration is zero, so you don't need that. So S will be X A, X naught will be X naught, V naught T will be V naught X, and then multiply by T. So X A, what is the value of X A? Six. Six. X naught? Zero. V naught T? A V naught X? 6.5 T. So what do you think? Here you can find T. Once you get T, you put in this equation, you can find? Yes. Yes. So can you find T? Okay. It's okay. This is our first time doing this kind of question. It's a lot of try and errors. But after you do many questions, you will get the hang of it. So find me T first. So what do you get for T? Can you please calculate? 0 0.92. 23. Seconds, okay. Yes. Put T in the equation above and find me H. Okay, relax class. I know you're hungry. Two and a half hours left before we break our fast. Okay. Calculate H for me. It, it doesn't have to be Danish only answering. It's just that if someone responds, uh, it'll be good. Anyone who calculate faster than Danish, please answer. Macam rasa nak order apam balik Tambah jagung Sedap dekat session tu Tak tahulah habis kelapa punam Sempat ke tak Kita try habiskan awal eh? okay. What is the answer for H? Anyone? Uh, saya dapat 0 0.48 Betul Okay, that is correct. Okay, so that is how you solve the problem. Okay, how about what, what you suggested earlier? Okay, when you suggested this earlier, this 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 uh, this formula here, you need to find Vy first. So maybe we can find Vy by putting our T value here as 0 0.923 seconds. So when we put our T here, we can get Vy. We can get the answer Vy. And we put our VY answer here. You can get H. Okay, there is also another method. But this method requires three steps. Where you need to find T first, find VY and then find H. But if you use this last method that I taught you, you can find T first and then find H. Okay, either way you get the same answer. As long as you understand how to do it. Okay, alright, good. Okay, so... Maybe we can do one more question to see your understanding. Okay, copy this question. Is it okay, everyone? Yeah, am I going too fast? You got the answer, right? Yes. Okay, I can proceed eh? Okay. Bye. Bye.
I hope no one is screenshot this thing. I do not want you to screenshot. I want you to write it in your book. Okay? Short screenshot is not going to help. Okay? And then don't forget to bring the book back here when you come back after Hari Raya. I think we can finish early this class. Okay, copy this diagram. Okay, let me know after you finish copying this. Dan ada. Dah.
Okay. All right. So for this question, okay, let's read this question. So for this question, okay. The track for this racing event was designed so the riders jump off the ramp uh, from a height of one meter. Okay, so ni rider tu, ni rider tu lah. Uh, rider ni is on a motorcycle, yeah. During a race, it was observed that the rider remained at air for 1.5 seconds. So T equals to 1.5 seconds. So he remained at mid air for 1.5 seconds. Now, determine the speed at which he was traveling off the ramp. So the speed when he traveled off the ramp is actually the initial speed. But here is mentioned point A. So kita can label it as VA now. Okay. Determine the speed at which he was traveling off the ramp. So then define V. And then the distance he traveled before striking the ground. So then I can find R. And then the maximum height before uh, uh, before striking the ground and the maximum height he attains. So then at H. Maximum height to the point C. Okay, good. So first step, we kita dah draw VA. Kita kena resolve. So bila resolve dia, kita resolve. Satu horizontal will become VA dalam bracket X. And then dia akan vertical VA dalam bracket Y. Okay. Angle ni, sorry saya lupa nak bagi. Angle ni ialah 30 degree. Okay, angle ni 30 degree. Tolong tambah ya. Eh. 30 degree ya eh, angle tu. Okay. Now, what is the coordinate for point A? For point A, the zero, coordinate is XA and YA. So, is 0, 0. The coordinate for B is XB y b what is the coordinate for b r negative one yes that is correct okay good so you have done that there is one thing that you're missing here you need to do this v a sine 30 and you need to write v a x as v a cos 30 but you do not know what is v a is an unknown and that is what we want to find. Okay, but the first question is they ask us to find T. Okay, so to find T, okay, um, eh, no, not T, sorry. The first question they ask is to find VA. Okay, look back at this question. For VA, for which formula you want to use? This time, VA, it can be horizontal, it can be vertical. But which formula you want to use? Here, time is given. So which formula you want to use? Three, madam. Three. Formula number three. Okay. Before that, let me ask you. Do you have VY? It's okay. It's okay. Let's just write it down. So this one is for the vertical. So this one will be V. Right now, our final is called what? Uh, VB. VB, yes. But don't forget, this is vertical. So there is a Y. And our initial is called VA. And our G is negative 9.1 and our time is 1.5. So right now, what do you want to find? You want to find VA. Uh, so VBY, which one we don't know. And then VAY, what is VAY? VAY is VA sine 30. 30. So you are left with how many unknowns? Mm. Yes. So it's either you need to solve VBY first to get VA or you suggest another formula. Any suggestions?
Nak balik awal tak? Uh, uh, pakai number four boleh tu. So if we use number four and it also vertical equation. Number four is S equals to S naught plus V naught T minus one over two G T square. Our S is now what? In vertical. Why what? What is final? A or B? B. B. Okay. You must be quick on this. So this one will be what? V naught is initial. So it will be V A Y. Okay. You know, replacing this formula into this one is what usually students always make mistake or they don't understand. Okay. When you don't replace it accordingly, you will make mistake. Okay. Some students throw pakai form this formula to do it. But when you do that, you make mistake. You don't know what is YB, YA. You don't know what is what. Okay, then the mistake will happen. Okay, what is our YB? YB negative 1. What is YA? Uh, 0. What is VAY? VA sin 30. What is T? 9.5. Yes. So what can you see here? You are left with how many number of unknowns? One. It means you can find what is VA. Can you please find me what is VA? So the correct formula is the set is the this formula, which is the fourth formula. What is VA? Quick, we have 10 more minutes before 5.30. What is VA? Okay, you need, be, you need to be quicker using the calculator. Eh, hey, kenapa YB negative 1? Oh, betul lah, betul lah, betul lah. Saja sih, saja sih. Kejut saya ni. Terkejut eh. Okay, what is VA? You need to be quicker using this calculator. I feel you are so slow pop. Slow pop. Slow pop. My son always use that term, slow pop, newbies, I don't know. What is VA? Anyone, anyone in the group? Okay, we're not referring to Danish only. Anyone that can calculate quicker than Danish, please? Thirteen point three eight seven. Okay, that is correct. Okay, good. You have answered that first question. The next question we want to find R. Which formula you want to use to find R? Okay, have a look at our R. Our R is actually what? XB, right? This is our R, XB. So it means our R, we need to use a formula that is horizontal formula because we want to find xb so for the horizontal formula which formula you want to find use to find r you're left with only two options which which one which variables have xb in it formula number one formula number two are you okay guys are you sleeping yes. huh? are you sleeping Oh. Then why is why not answering? They are so hungry. They are so hungry. You think I'm not hungry? Yeah, I'm also hungry. Okay, so this one, since we're using the horizontal motion formula, the S will be XB, X naught will be XA, V naught will be what? 
since initial is VA, so this one will be VAXT. Okay, this is the thing that I notice students do not know how to replace. So what is our XB value? XB is R, XA is 0, and then VA is VA cos 30 times T. Okay, so you can actually already find R because VA is what you have found just now, which is 13.38, I think, cos 30 multiplied by 1.5. So you can definitely get R. What is R? Seventeen point three eight. Okay, units are in meters. Okay, good. That is the answer. Now the final question is: They ask you to find H. Okay. All right. And H, you have another coordinate here. Another coordinate that you have to take into account is point C. So what is the coordinate for point C? Point C will be X, C, and Y, C. Okay, and what is H actually? Is, is Y, C equal to H or is Y, C equals to H minus 1? Mm. Y, C is actually from here to here. So what is YC? H minus 1. Yes, YC is actually H minus 1. Now, when something that is flying through the air, when it reaches the maximum height, there is something that I taught you last time when we do a question related to the rocket and the ball. When a thing that flies into the air, when it reaches maximum height, what is the velocity? Zero. Yes, so there is a clue that we need to include in our calculation which is not written here okay so that we know that vc y will equals to zero at maximum height and we know that y uh c is equals to actually uh what was it uh h minus one. now to find uh h which formula you want to use Of course, it's the vertical motion formula, but which one? Four, uh, three, four, or five? Yes? Three, four, or five? Because you have an extra information, you know Vy where is zero. So which formula has that? And which formula has C? Formula number five. That is correct. So we write formula number five. V e square equals to V not squared minus two G S minus oops S. Oh, what happened there? Something is flying. My pen. Okay. Oops, oops, oops. S minus S naught. So this one will be, because now I will find, because when you do this equation, you need to relate two points. So for this question, it will be VC, Y squared, and our initial will be what? A or B? A. Uh, v A. Our S now is YC minus Y A. Okay, so VCY, we know it is already zero. VAY, we know is 13.38 uh, sine 30. Don't forget to square root, square it, square, minus 2 times 9.81. And we know YC is actually H minus 1. And we know YA is actually zero. So from here, you can already find H. Can you find me H?
What is the answer, please? Anyone? Uh, 3.28 meter. Okay, that is correct. 3.28 meters, that is correct. Okay, I have an additional homework for you. I want you to find what is VBX. I'll give you the answer. And what will be VBY? Okay, this is a homework. Okay, do it right after this class if you can. Okay. All right, this is one more. So let's recap what we learned today. All right, so what we learned today is we are focusing on curvilinear motion, which is the rectangular coordinate system. So here you have, you need to know how to draw the coordinate system, which for this question, and you need to know how to able to write the equation. Okay, so we have done two equations just now, two questions just now, and you are using the constant acceleration formula whereby you have to create two new equations, one for the horizontal motion and one for the vertical motion. Okay, all right, and you need to relate it between two points. Okay, all right, I think that's all, and this is a homework question for you. Okay, so you can, there are a lot of final exam questions related to this topic which you can try. Any other questions that you may ask before we end this class? No. Oh, I have gone purple and no one told me. No, my dear. Dah purple dah. Okay. All right. Never mind. Okay. Uh, thank God my favorite color is purple. So I'm a purple lecturer today. Okay. But all right. This, okay. I will stop the recording now. Okay. Thank you. Since there are no questions, you can